This video is brought to you by myvayteaching.com. In this part, uh, we are going to study about electrostatic potential. Okay. You just consider any general static charge configuration. Okay. And here we know the potential energy of a test charge Q in terms of the work done on the charge Q. And this work is proportional to charge Q. Okay. So the force at any point, it is given by Q into E. Where E is the electric field at that point due to the given charge configuration. Okay. So, it is convenient to divide the work by the amount of charge Q so that the resulting quantity is independent of Q. In other words, we can say work done per unit test charge is characteristic of the electric field which is associated with the charge configuration. So, this work done per unit test charge, it leads to electrostatic potential to a given charge configuration okay see work done by external force in bringing a unit positive charge from point r to point p as we can see in this figure that is given by delta u is equal to u p minus u r by q okay that is equal to w r p by q okay so this is the formula and this is also equal to the potential Vp minus Vr. So here Vp and Vr are the electrostatic potentials at point P and R. See, it is not the actual value of potential, but the potential difference that is physically significant. And we can uh, choose potential to be zero at infinity as we done before. See, work done by an external force in bringing a unique positive charge from infinity to a point is called as electrostatic potential at that point. Okay, work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity where we are considering the potential to be zero to a point under consideration. That we call it as electrostatic potential. In other words, we can say uh, about this electrostatic potential. So, this electrostatic potential at any point in a region with electrostatic field is the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to that point. This is also the same. See, to obtain the work done per unit test charge, we should take an infinitely small test charge that is delta Q. This is an infinitely small test charge. And uh, to obtain the work done, delta w in bringing it from infinity to the point and uh, to determine work done per unit charge delta w by delta q so the external force at every point of the path is to be equal and opposite to the electrostatic force on the test charge at that point okay so this electrostatic potential is nothing but the work done in bringing a unique positive charge from infinity to the point under consideration in an electrostatic field. 
Now let us study potential due to a point charge. Okay. See, consider a point charge Q at the origin. As you can see, the point charge Q at the origin O. Take Q to be positive. And here we wish to determine the potential at any point P with position vector R from the origin. So here we want to determine potential at this point P with the position vector R from Q. So we must calculate the work done in bringing a unit positive test charge from infinity to point P in order to calculate that potential at this point, isn't it? Yes. And we know Q is positive, which means Q is greater than zero. See the work done against the repulsive force on the test charge is positive. And we know work done is independent of the part, it depends initial and final positions and we choose a convenient path along the radial direction from infinity to point P. Okay. So, at some intermediate point as you can see P dash On the path, the electrostatic force on a unit positive charge is given by Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R dash square R dash 10. So, where R is the unit vector along OP dash, okay. Work done against this force from R dash to R dash plus delta R dash that is given by delta W is equal to Q by 4 by epsilon naught delta R dash square delta R dash cap. Okay. So, the negative sign appears because delta R dash is less than 0 and delta W is positive. Okay. Now, total work done by the external force is obtained by integrating uh, the equation that we studied just now that is w is equal to integration of infinity to r dash okay so the total work done is given by integration of minus of infinity to r q by 4 pi epsilon naught r dash square dr dash. So, this is equal to minus q by 4 pi epsilon naught integration of r dash. Okay, which is uh, equal to Q by 4 by epsilon naught R. Okay. V of R is equal to Q by 4 by epsilon naught R. So, the potential at D due to charge Q. And uh, this equation is true for any sign of the charge. Okay. If you consider Q is greater than 0 or uh, in, okay, in its uh, derivation or if you consider q less than 0 then v will be less than 0 that is work done per unit positive test charge in bringing it from infinity to the point is negative. So this is equivalent to saying that work done 
by the electrostatic force in bringing the unit positive charge from infinity to the point P is positive. Okay. And this equation is consistent with the choice that potential at infinity be 0. If you consider that, then only it we can, uh, what we can say, we can prove this equation. So, with considering that point, that is potential at infinity is 0, we are deriving this equation. Okay. So, this is uh, variation of potential B with R and field width R in units of Q by 4 pi epsilon naught for a point charge Q. You can see here. It shows how electrostatic potential and electrostatic field varies with R. This is electrostatic potential and electrostatic uh, potential V and electrostatic field E. How it varies with R that is shown in this graph. And uh, this electrostatic potential, it, it varies as 1 by R and this E is proportional to 1 by R square. Okay. Now let us see a simple problem here. Calculate the potential at a point P due to a charge of 4 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb located 9 cm away. Hence, obtain the work done in bringing a charge of 2 nano coulomb from infinity to the point P. Does the answer depend on the path along which the charge is brought? So here we have to calculate the potential as well as work done. In the first case potential, in the second case work done and even we should analyze this point that whether it is depending on the path or not. Okay. Let us solve this problem. So in order to find the potential, we know V is equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R. Isn't it? So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is given by 9 into 10 raised to 9. And Q they have given it as 4 into 10 raised to minus 7. And R is 0 0.09 meters. 9 centimeter they have given actually. So 9 centimeter if you convert into meters it is 9 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter which is nothing but 0 0.09 meter. Okay. If you solve this we get 4 into 10 raised to 4 volt. So this is the potential. And coming to the part B. So, this is part A. So, work done in bringing that uh, charge to point P is given by Q into V. And they have given the amount of charge that is uh, 2 nano coulomb. And we know the potential. Just now we have calculated it. So, we get 8 into 10 raised to minus 5 joule. Work done. So, will be path independent. As we know, work done does not depend on the path. It does not depend on the path that is taken. And any arbitrary infinitely small path can be resolved into two perpendicular displacements. One along R and another perpendicular to R. Okay, the work done corresponding to the letter will be 0. So, this is a very simple problem.